Do you want to know a quick and easy way to add text behind a person like this? Well, I got you covered. It is all about the little extras that make your video just look better. It is subtle, but it's there and people love it. Titles and text can add a lot to your video and you can do two things. You can either just slap the text on your video or you can put it behind the moving object. So let's not waste any more time and open up Premiere Pro. The first thing to do is to put the clip on the timeline and go through it to see where you want the text to appear. As you can see, I already did that. So I'm just going to enlarge my screen really quickly. There we go. All right, so now there's two things that we can do. We can either click on the little T right here or we can just press T on our keyboard. This will get you the type tool. And as creative as I am, I'm just going to use the text text. If you go to the upper left corner and you see next to source effect control, click on that and then go to source text and pick out your font. There are so many fonts, so take your time and pick whatever font you want to use. You can also find a ton of free fonts online. Right here you can increase the size of the text or decrease it of course. I really like this tool because with this tool you can create some space between the letters. And down here is the position and what I like to do is to reset the position and then go here and center it and then from there I just either put it a little bit higher or lower but at least you know that it is centered. Because the size slide tool only goes to 400 what I like to do is to press V to get the selection tool and then I take one of the corners and just drag it to make the text bigger. All right let's reposition it a little bit. You can also center the text by just dragging it around and then you'll see this red line appear. But I honestly think a quicker way is just by resetting the position like I showed you earlier. All right, now it is time to do some actual work. What we want to do is we want to go to the opacity section and first we want to untoggle that little clock because we don't want any keyframes. And I'm going to decrease the opacity to almost zero because what we want is we want to see the line on which we're going to create the mask. Before we create a mask, we want to make sure that we can see everything very well. So I'm just going to zoom into 150%. You can find this drop down menu right next to the time code in the bottom left corner of the preview screen. Let's go back to the opacity section and click on this little pen tool. In order to create this mask, we're going to outline the person, in this case me, by simply clicking on the screen. Don't worry if you don't cover everything at first because we're going to create some curves. And if you created a point and you're not happy with it, you can either drag it like I did or you can just Ctrl Z or Command C to undo it. All right, so now we see two things happen. The first thing is that it doesn't really look like the shape of my head. And second, the text disappeared. Don't worry, we'll fix both, but we'll start with the shape of the mask. If you press Alt on your keyboard, you see these little handles appear, and if you drag either of the handles, you can see that you can create a curve. This looks a little bit silly, but whatever, we're just gonna roll with it because it's all we need to mask. Now we're going to bring the opacity way up, and as you can see, the text disappeared, but it's right in my face, and we actually want it the other way around. In order to accomplish that, we're going to click the little box, inverted. Voila! There we go. It looks pretty good, doesn't it? But you can still see that the mask isn't as accurate right now, so I'm going to show you a few things how you can fix this. And one of the things that I want to show you is this mask feather. If you reduce the mask feather to zero, you can see that there's a very harsh line. And if you increase it, the more you increase it, the softer the line is and the more it goes into my face. Personally, I like the value of the mask feather to be low, like about five or six, because then it's still a little bit smooth, but it's not too smooth, because if it looks too smooth, it's gonna look weird. So just play around with the value and see what looks good to you. There's also this other option called mask expansion and you can use this in case you created a mask that's either too big or too small. But in this case, I think I did a pretty good job, but it could use a little bit of expansion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set it to four. As you can see, the right side of my head isn't masked very well. So we can fix this by just clicking on the mask or mask path or any of those. And you can see that the mask appears. Now we can easily change it again. 
Also, don't forget to save your project because you don't want to lose everything after you've put in all the hard work that a mask requires. This already looks great, but the truth is that it only looks great for this frame. Because I move, the mask needs to move with me. In order to do that, we need to enable mask path. You can enable mask path by clicking on this little clock and it turns blue. And this means that you can create keyframes. We just enabled our mask path and now it is time to adjust the mask as we go. So what I like to do is I go a couple frames forward. I don't do it frame by frame because in this case I am not moving that much. If I do it frame by frame and I adjust every frame, it's gonna look a little bit choppy. So what I would recommend is to, if you are doing it frame by frame, to not move all the points every time because it's gonna look weird and choppy. And if you can, just adjust it every couple of frames. When you create a keyframe for every couple of frames, it will kind of like grow from the previous value to this value. So it will kind of track the entire motion without one, spending a lot of time on it, and two, risking to end up with a very choppy, ugly looking mask which you will then have to fix again for every frame, which brings me back to point one, and that is spend a lot of time. And we want this to be quick and easy, so let's do it this way. All right, so every couple of frames, you're just going to adjust the mask as needed. If you want to move a few frames forward, you can either click on this or you can press the right arrow on your keyboard or the left arrow on your keyboard if you want to go backwards. And if you want to see what it looks like, what I always do is I just click on the clip below it. Because sometimes, and honestly, in my case, all the time, I find that blue line very annoying because I cannot properly see what I'm doing. So just click on the clip below it so you can see an actual preview. Then if you want to work on your mask again, click on your text clip and go to mask. Click on mask and the blue line should appear again. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. It really depends on your clip. Just move the points around and adjust it as needed. All right, let's play it through. But I don't like to play it through on full speed because then I can miss some details. So what I do is I usually drag my toggle head or whatever it's called. I just drag that through the clip. Looks pretty good already, but I'm just gonna go back in to fine tune it a little bit now. If you wanna see your keyframes better, you can just drag this and make it bigger. I think we did it. Now the last things that we need to do is we need to up the opacity again. The best thing is that after you created this mask and you were like, oh shoot, I wanna change the text or I don't like this font, don't worry, you can change everything. All you need to do is to double click on the text or first enable the type tool by pressing T and then clicking on the text. If you double click on it, you will automatically select all of the text. And if this is not the case, just press Ctrl A or Command A on your keyboard and that should do it. And look, I can change this text to anything. But because I'm that creative, I'm just gonna stick with text. Ah. Look at how good that looks. If you're serious about making better videos, I really recommend checking out this video. And of course, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in case you want to be notified. And we can see each other in the next video right here.